I don't weld every day, but when it's time to weld, I want a welder that's going to hold up. So the question is, will that $70 welder work just as well as the one that cost $2,000? In the first test, we'll see how well the welders penetrate steel. Then we'll see which one offers the strongest weld. Not all the welders will survive the overload protection test. A big thanks to Joe from Harrisonville, Missouri for helping me test the welders. It's hard to believe you could actually buy a welder for $70. It claims to be an intelligent AC-DC welding machine. It claims to deliver up to 200 amps. It's internally protected to prevent overheating. Made in China. And the S7 welder is extremely light at only 5.1 pounds. Let's kick off our first test and we'll see how much current each welder produces at 120 volts. To minimize voltage drop, I'm using a 20 foot 12 gauge extension cord. I'll be using a clamp meter to measure the current. While the clamp meter is definitely not the gold standard, it'll provide us a pretty accurate assessment. Let's start off at 100 amps and then we'll test the welders on the highest setting. And the S7 made it to 73.1 peak amps or 27 amps short. Let's dial up the S7 to 201 amps. And the S7 made it to 113.7 amps before dropping back a little. So it came up almost 90 amps short. At an amazing price of only $90 is this Simder brand. It's a DC inverter arc welder. Simder claims that it's a professional welding machine manufacturer. Up to 200 amps. Adjustable hot start function which helps to improve the reliability of the arc striking and reduce spatter while welding. A hot start means the welder is delivering a higher amperage output than the selected current during the start of the weld. This helps start an arc without the welding stick becoming stuck. Made in China. And the Simder weighs 5.2 pounds. And that's a pretty impressive display for a $90 welder. And the Simder is set on 100 amps. After a couple of seconds, the current reached a peak of 68.2 amps and came up about 32 amps short. And the welder is set to a max of 200 amps. And the Simder ran out of steam at 123.3 amps or about 10 amps better than the S7. Also the price of $90, the same price as the Simder, is this Hone brand. It's a DC inverter welder. Up to 140 amps. Uses 110 or 220 volts. It claims to offer advanced powerful arc force providing smoother welding and deeper penetration. It claims to have an amazing hot start which is ideal for 6013, 7018, and 7014 rods. They even threw in a couple of tools. The hone is very light at 5.56 pounds. Most of the welders claim to offer a hot start and the hone delivered a really hot start at 143 amps. And the welder dropped back to around 93 to 105 amps which is the best yet. The highest setting on the hone is 140 amps. And the hone began at 144 amps and then dropped back to the mid 120s. So the hone is done by far the best yet. For only $110, Deco claims you can have super power with their welder. It claims to offer up to 160 amps. They claim you can use this welder for mild steel, stainless, and cast iron. Made in China. And the Deco is the heaviest yet, but still very light at only 7.2 pounds. On the 100 amp setting, the Deco started off at 87.9 and dropped down to the mid 70s. So not quite as good as the Hone. And the Deco is set to the max setting of 159 amps. And the Deco started off at 132 amps and quickly dropped to around 105 amps, which is the lowest constant output yet. At a price of $129 is this Yes Welder. It's a dual voltage 110-220 hot start portable welding machine. It claims it can deliver up to 205 amps. Ideal performance for most 6010, 6011, 6013, and 7018 rods. It claims to offer overcurrent and overload protection. They claim that this welder boosts the current during the starting process to provide easy, quick, and reliable starts. The Yes Welder is made in China. And the Yes Welder is the heaviest yet at 8.35 pounds. On 100 amp setting, the Yes Welder started off at 81 amps and dropped to around 79 amps. On the highest setting of 138 amps, the Yes Welder held pretty steady at around 107 amps. At a price of $320 is this titanium brand stick welder, which is sold at Harbor Freight. Uses inverter technology for better arc start. Weighs only 16.5 pounds. Dual voltage 120 and 240 volt. Up to 70 amps using 120 volt outlet. Up to 225 amps when using 240 volts. The power cord is 8 feet in length and the ground and the electrode holder cables are both 10 feet. Both cables are quick and easy to install and remove. The titanium is made in China. The titanium weighs 16.67 pounds. The numbers closest to the knob indicate the current is at 120 volts. And the titanium is maxed out at 70 amps. It is a hot start welder and it did a great job delivering a hot start at 83.7 amps and then settled to around 74. At an eye-watering price of $2,300, is this Lincoln 210? As I've said many times before, this is not a sponsored channel, and I purchased all the welders. Unlike the previous welders, the Lincoln 210 is designed for MIG, stick, TIG, and flux core welding. Inside the side panel of the welder is a very helpful reference chart. Once you input the metal thickness in the welding rod selection, it'll provide a suggested current range. You can weld up to 3 8 material using MIG. For even thicker materials, you can use 532nd stick electrodes. It's dual voltage offering 110 or 220 volts. The Lincoln is assembled in Mexico. And the Lincoln's by far the heaviest yet at 41.86 pounds. I've got the Lincoln set up to deliver a hot start. And the Lincoln's hot start was at 112 amps. A close look at the welder's display, and the Lincoln is within one amp of the multimeter and is very close to 100 amps. Very impressive. At 120 volts, the Lincoln has a maximum current of 115 amps. I set up the Lincoln to offer a really hot start. According to the multimeter, the Lincoln started off at 147 amps and then dropped down to 115 amps. So the Lincoln is right on target. At 70 amps for the titanium and 100 amps for all the other welders, 
the Lincoln delivered 100% accuracy at 100 amps. The hone ran a little hot at 105% and titanium 107%. At 120 volts and with the welders dialed all the way up to the maximum setting, the Lincoln delivered 100% accuracy. Titanium's max setting is 70 amps and was at 107%. Hone finished in third at 91% accuracy. Up next, let's see how the welders perform at 240 volts. We'll start with the Cinder since the S7 does not come with a 240 volt adapter. On the 100 amp setting, the Cinder only made it to 69.2 amps. So about the same at 240 volts versus 120. At 200 amps, the Cinder ran out of steam at 122.5 amps. So unfortunately, the Cinder did not take advantage of the 240 volts. And the Hone is set on 100 amps at 240 volts. Unfortunately, the Hone is running about 35 amps too hot. At the maximum setting of 140 amps, the Hone is in the upper 130s. So pretty accurate on the highest setting. At 240 volts and 100 amps, the Deco is doing a great job in the mid to upper 90s. On the highest setting of 160 amps, the Deco has a great hot start at around 170 amps and dropped to the lower 140s. And the Yes Welder is set to 100 amps, but it came up over 20 amps short in the upper 70s. And the Yes Welder is set to a maximum of 206 amps. And the Yes Welder is making the most current yet at 159.6 amps. Not bad for a $130 welder. Titanium has an analog display and it's pretty challenging to set it at precisely 100 amps. I did the best I could and the welder is pretty close at 105 amps. On the maximum setting of 225 amps, the titanium started off at almost 245 amps and then dropped down to around 233. So just a little more heat than advertised. And the Lincoln is set up to deliver a hot start at 100 amps. And the Lincoln started the weld at 119 and quickly tapered to 99 to 100 amps. Very impressive. On the highest setting of 175 amps, the Lincoln delivered a great hot start at 206 amps. It quickly tapered and stayed at 173 to 175 amps until I burned through the metal which caused the current to become erratic. So once again, very consistent performance. For welder current accuracy at 100 amps, the Lincoln came out on top at 100%. Deco finished in second at 97% and titanium third at 107%. At the maximum current set Setting, the Lincoln is the most accurate at 100%. However, the Hone did a great job at 99% and titanium was a little hot at 104. If you're looking for a welder that offers the most current, the titanium came out on top at 233 amps. The Lincoln finished in second at 175 and Yes Welder 159.6 amps. Just to avoid causing confusion, the Lincoln can deliver higher amperage for MIG welding. Let's test the maximum penetration of the welders on quarter inch by four inch mild steel. We'll run all the welders on maximum power using 1 8 inch 7018. And the S7 started off a little cold, but the welding performance improved after a few seconds. The S7 is only making about 113 amps, which is not nearly enough to achieve good penetration. And the weld looks great, but let's take a closer look to see if there's good penetration. Let's first ground off the weld flush with the steel. I'll go ahead and cut away one inch of the test coupon so we can take a closer look at the weld. And the S7 welder had 5.84 millimeters of unfinished business. So the total penetration was only about a half a millimeter. A big thanks to Joe who recommended this design for testing the welds. It was a great design that I put together to test the welds. The outer rollers spin freely. Once the test coupon is in place, the plunger will press downward until the weld breaks. And one half millimeter of penetration just isn't enough and the coupon broke at only 200 187 pounds. And the cinder produces more current than the S7 and it's definitely making better penetration. And the cinder penetrated by 1.09 millimeters or about twice as deep as the S7. Unfortunately, I made a mistake and applied force to the wrong side of the test piece. So I have to throw out the test results. And the hone delivers a lot more current than the S7 at around 138 amps. And the hone has the best looking weld yet. The Hone has 4.65 millimeters of unfinished business, which means about 1.7 millimeters of penetration, the best yet. The test piece for the Hone made it to just over 400 pounds before the weld broke. With the Deco, the hot start is pretty good and it's offering pretty good heat right out of the gate. Definitely a lot more consistent arc than the previous brands. The Deco made a nice looking weld running at about 147 amps. And the Deco has made the best penetration yet at 2.15 millimeters. And the Deco has done the best so far, making it to 689 pounds before folding over. So the Deco has more than twice the strength compared to the S7. And the yes the welder did a terrific job at the start of the weld and delivered a very smooth arc pattern. The Yes Welder maintained around 160 amps of current throughout the weld. And for a budget welder, the Yes Welder makes a very nice looking weld. 3.86 millimeters of unfinished business and about 2.49 millimeters of penetration. And the Yes Welder also performed the best on the tester at 830 pounds before the weld broke. And the titanium makes way too much heat for the 1 8 inch 7018 rod, but this is a max penetration test. A very nice and steady arc for the titanium. Definitely too much current for this welding rod, but the penetration is the best so far only needing 2.1 millimeters more for complete penetration. Titanium is done by far the best yet at 2,436 pounds when the weld finally broke. And the Lincoln is delivering very close to 175 amps and is making a very smooth arc pattern. A little cool on the start, but a very nice looking weld overall. The Lincoln doesn't offer as much current as the titanium for arc welding and it achieved less penetration at 3.94 millimeters. And the Lincoln made it to 1,398 pounds of force when the weld finally broke. Titanium makes the most penetration at 4.25 millimeters, but Lincoln finished in second at 3. 
2.94. Yes, welder also performed very well at 2.49 millimeters, and it took 2,436 pounds to break the titanium test piece. Lincoln finished in second at almost 1,400 pounds, and Yes, welder 830. Let's kick off our next test once again using quarter inch steel. Both test pieces will have a 30 degree bevel with a 30 seconds of an inch landing butted up tight. This is not a welding test for Joe, but instead a test for the welders. To level the playing field, the welders are going to be limited to 130 amps. With that being said, this is really going to limit the effectiveness of the Deco Yes Welder Titanium and Lincoln. Joe will run a total of four passes. He'll start off with a 6013 rod on the root pass. Then he'll make three more passes with 7018 for fill and cap. He'll brush off the slag between each pass. And the S7 really struggled to maintain an arc on this test, and the welder gave up several times. Just like the previous test, the S7 doesn't make enough current to achieve good penetration. I've asked Joe to provide technical feedback on each of the welds. The S7 welder starts out kind of cold, slowly warms up. It does run a fairly decent pass. Unfortunately, the cinder made a lot of splatter and still did not perform well with penetration on the root pass. And Joe made three more passes with the cinder, but the welder just isn't delivering enough current to make good penetration. Cinder starting out is a little bit cold. It does run a much better root pass. A little bit of heat fluctuation in it, but not too bad. The display on the welders is going to vary quite a bit, but my goal is to set up the welders to achieve right at 130 amps. And the hone is making plenty of current and a fairly stable arc to deliver a nice root pass. Hone, it runs a good root. We burned all the way through the 90% of the test piece. Steady arc, even legs on your weld. Nice concave passes. And the Deco is definitely an upgrade from the Hone, and it's delivering a fairly stable arc. Definitely the best root pass of all the brands yet. Here we got the Deco, pretty good running a root, almost full penetration, smooth arc, good consistency with the weld. And the Yes Welder is definitely an upgrade from the Deco with a very smooth and stable arc. However, both the Deco and the Yes Welder did a pretty good job on the root pass. Pretty good root for the most part, a little bit of inconsistency there, a very nice looking cap, smooth bead. And the Titanium delivers a very smooth and consistent arc. Titanium's root pass looks a little bit better than the Deco and the Yes Welders. It definitely seems like a pretty big upgrade from the Yes Welder. Titanium, almost full penetration, didn't quite blow through. It started to a little bit here, not all the way. A good consistent weld. Just like the Deco, Yes Welder, and Titanium, the Lincoln was limited to just 130 amps to level the playing field with the inexpensive welders. Just like the Titanium, the Lincoln delivers a very smooth and consistent arc. And the root pass with the Lincoln looks very nice. The Lincoln, it ran a good route, didn't quite penetrate all the way. Turn the heat up just a little bit and run just fine of a weld. You got a good steady arc. It's smooth, consistent, you no know, problems with the way this thing runs. Let's go ahead and grind off the top of the weld so that there's an even surface with each of the test coupons. And the S7 and the cinder experienced a huge disadvantage since they weren't able to achieve 130 amps of current. And both coupons broke at well under 3,000 pounds of force. As expected, all of the other brands performed very close to the same at around 4,500 pounds of force. Once again, placing a limit of 130 amps really held back the top four most expensive welders. However, it did allow for an apples to apples comparison and leveled the playing field. It's always a good idea to first remove rust before welding, but let's see how well the welders perform on rusty metal anyway. And the S7 took a lot of effort to get going and it didn't like the rusty metal. The sender took even more effort to start the weld compared to the S7. And the hone performed by far the best yet and lit up after a couple of bumps. And it was very easy for the deco to get going and a very stable arc on rusty metal. A couple of extra taps to strike an arc with the Yes Welder, but it did a great job once it got going. Titanium made very easy work of rusty metal and it delivered a very smooth and steady arc. A couple of light taps and the Lincoln is laying down a weld. It's hard to put a lot of faith in the advertised duty cycles for some of the welders considering some of them offer very inconsistent results. So let's see if the welders can deliver five minutes of welding. We'll go ahead and skip the S7 welder since it's tripping the 20 amp breaker in less than in a minute. And everything is going well for the sender and we're working on the second welding rod. And we're about a minute and 42 seconds into the test. And the sender does not have overload protection and experienced catastrophic failure at a minute and 43 seconds. And the hone cost about the same amount as the sender at around $90 and it lasted more than twice as long before shutting down at 3 minutes and 49 seconds. Unlike the sender, the home has overload protection and it survived the test. All of the other welders lasted an entire five minutes without shutting down or overheating. I tested all the welders for current accuracy and the results varied quite a bit. And the least expensive welder, the S7, struggled the most. The blue line represents the setting on the welder and the orange line is the actual current. Unfortunately, the S7's actual current is lower than the display indicates. And the sender was a little bit better than the S7, but its actual current is quite a bit lower than the display indicates. And the hone welder actually didn't do too bad, off by less than 10%. And the deco isn't off too far at lower current, but it becomes more inaccurate at higher settings. Unfortunately, the Yes Welder isn't quite as accurate as the Hone and the Deco throughout the entire range. And Titanium's analog dial makes it pretty difficult to achieve 
achieve precise settings. As you might expect from a very expensive welder, the Lincoln is right on target. So which welder is best? The Lincoln came in first place if one takes everything into account, including the length and quality of the clamps and cables. However, titanium was in a close second. If we factor out the quality of the clamps and cables, titanium came in on top with an average finish of 1.3. It's definitely not fair to compare a multi-process welder like the Lincoln on a cost basis, but we did it anyway to help those trying to decide which way to go. If you plan to buy a very affordable welder, my suggestion is to go ahead and buy a current meter for around $30 to $40. I'll gladly put together a review on MIG welders or multi-process welders if there's enough interest. It's pretty rare for me to discourage people from buying a specific brand, but I would recommend avoiding the Cinder and the S7. In my opinion, the Hone is definitely the way to go if you're looking for a welder for under $100. Finally, please help me by saying thank you to Joe in the comments section. Hopefully your kind words will encourage him to help me on the next welder review. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.